Hey everyone, it's 12 to 16 p.m. It is December 14th. Happy Thursday. So I've been pretty busy in the last few days. Remember when I, I said I wanted pictures of Prince Alamehu? Well, I decided it would be silly to use a picture to remember myself, right? I did, however, see the value of making some spirit dolls of my parents in my past life. Dolls are vessels for the dead in many religions since they basically have hollow shells. You may remember the movie Beauty and the Beast where there's several enchanted objects. The depiction is something of an exaggeration, but it's an example of the energies of objects having a life of their own. Typically, this is felt on an intuitive level, not an actual phys physical manifestation of activity. Dolls are one of the most likely objects to become enchanted since they have human form. Some dolls have enchanted, can become enchanted all on their own without being invited into the vessel. There are spirits that look for bodies and will inhabit anything that suits their needs. Even stuffed animals can become enchanted, okay? <laughs> Does your child have a doll that they love they loved from day one? I know when I was growing up, I had a couple dolls and stuffed animals that I loved from day one. I know when I was younger, um, on Christmas morning, when I was six years old, um, my mom had a stuffed dog for me. His name was Bogart the Basset Hound. And I slept with that dog till I was like 17 years old. I mean, I had an attachment to this dog. And, you know, um, I wanted a dog so bad that I would take my jump rope and like wrap it around his neck and walk it like it was a dog, you know. But I loved it and I put so much energy into that, that little stuffed animal. And it felt like love you know now Bogart is retired and he's in a little box that I have and I do plan on taking him to some professionals so that they can um refurbish him you know I've seen some people on Facebook who have this great skill to bring the little stuffed animals back to life and in, into a new condition and you know Bogart's stuffing has fallen out and everything because he's been loved you know I know when I saw the Velveteen Rabbit when I was a kid um you know I was crying, you know, I was crying at the end of that because I, since I was a child, had an attachment to stuffed animals, okay, because looking back and now I'm thinking about my experience in my life with this whole story, right, I can see why I was a very lonely child and for, for me and a lot of children, stuffed animals are the only friends that they have. Unfortunately, some of these spirits can be negative, okay? Um, their actions are felt on an intuitive level. So you may notice behavioral changes in your child if they start, if they have like a, a bratty uh, demon <laughs> inside of their stuffed animal. And to keep your home free of negative energy, you can perform spiritual cleansing in your house. You could use prayer, sage smudging, and holy water. Or you may want to call in an experienced member of the clergy if the act Activity is too strong for you. You may end up having to dispose of the vessel. Today I'm going to focus on benevolent spirits. I'm going to talk about calling in ancestors or loved ones and using a doll as a vessel when they come to visit. Now keep in mind that spirits are not bound to live in the doll. Okay, spirits are free and they come and go as they please. They only come into the vessel when you want to make contact. Here's a little background on my new dolls, okay? It's important to acknowledge the previous life that the ancestor or the loved one once lived. The Emperor Tarodros II and his consort, um, Empress Tyrorwork, Ruby, I believe it's how you pronounce her name, were known to have kind of a rocky relationship. So I'm mindful of this and I decided to keep a distance between the two. <laughs> I may place them on separate shelves. Dolls can be made of any material. I'm known to work with felt, and quite frankly, it was the only material that I had on hand. I did purchase two fat quarters of fabric, um, since after observing the flowy fit of the clothing in Ethiopia, I realized that felt just wasn't going to cut it, so I made bodies out of their out of felt, and added additional wraps, which are made of the cloth that I purchased. I remember making a few videos saying that I wanted a picture of, you know, not just Prince Alamelehu, but I also wanted pictures of the emperor and the empress. Um, all I've been able to come up with was fictitious pictures of them. And this is the one, this picture right here is what I used as inspiration for the doll. Okay, so here's more, more close up of 
the emperor. And what I did was I used the pattern and I'm leaving the putting the pattern in the description box. And what I used is, of course, I used a like a chocolate color brown for his skin, and then I made his his shirt and his pants out of felt, and then I used the felt quarters in the fabric quarter that um, I purchased to make his little. I don't I know what you call that, but it was just something that you saw in the picture where it was like the little drape that he was wearing. Um, you'd also notice in the picture that he had like a headband that went around his head. Um, unfortunately for the shape of this doll head, it did not work. I was getting really frustrated. So I kind of made him a little ponytail in the back. Now what I did was I used yarn for their hair, okay? Um, you'll have to, in, you know, put each piece of yarn in their head. Um, or what you could do is you could just, put the hair around the perimeters of the the circumference of his head or her head and just kind of you know put it up in a ponytail that way you don't have to fill all the hair in once you make the doll um what i did was you know i, I always want to make adornments for 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 dolls you know like for example you know men i don't know if they wore like necklaces there in ethiopia or they had special jewelry or they wore earrings for men you know i don't know so i just kind of based it off the picture i did make him a little necklace here and then i used um regular paint for his eyes now you can purchase eyes if you want to you can go to um like michael's um they have all kinds of arts and craft type you know materials that you could use for eyes i do have eyes but they're like googly eyes and i thought th that wouldn't be appropriate so i ended up just painting them if you can make them as realistic as you can that's great you know um you can use buttons if you want it to the doll doesn't have to be like beautiful okay it doesn't have to be perfect okay but you do want to have it like you know as close to their likeness as you can get it you know i'm assuming that he had brown eyes that doesn't mean he couldn't have had blue eyes but chances are he had brown eyes so i made his eyes brown and then you know i gave him lips and like the little as many features as i possibly can you know based on the picture so i think he i did pretty good for this particular emperor for the Empress, also known as Queen Taranesh, I used a different skin color, a little bit lighter than the Emperor, and I used felt for her dress. And then I used um, some gems that I got at the dollar store. Um, you know, hopefully you can see those. You know, I noticed that there's a lot of little intricate designs on the Ethiopian garments. Now, I'm not doing their, their clothes any justice, okay, especially with felt, okay? I noticed that their, their fabrics are very flowy, okay? That's one of the reasons why I kept thinking, well, maybe I should, you know, go ahead and add regular fabric so that I can kind of, you know, imitate as much as I possibly can that look. And like I said, these are felt dolls, so they're not going to be as nice as someone maybe from Ethiopia who made it directly, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm very, I don't have as much knowledge on Ethiopian fashion, okay? But I did the best I could. So what I did was I added the fabric here for her little drape that she has. I did give her earrings and I made her hair. Um, I put in a lot of hair for her. And then of course I couldn't make a little, I didn't know if, if she wore a crown. I have no pictures, there are no pictures of the empress on the internet i have no idea what she looks like okay so i kept thinking okay well i'll go ahead and make this little scrunchie for her hair it kind of looks like a i was going to put like a little gem here like for like a little diamond or an emperor i mean um um i don't know like a, a gem or something but no i just left that off but i did you know add details to her i gave her like you know eyeliner and i put in a little bit of purple around her eyes to i don't think they wore that there i don't think they did but you know i'm a girl and i figured the empress wanted to look good you know so i added a little eyeshadow for her and then i added some lipstick that kind of you know um coordinates with her her clothes and then, of course, I think I did mention her earrings, but, you know, she came out really well. I think they both did, and I'm, I'm satisfied with them. If you'd like to make a spirit doll, you can use the pattern in the description box. And I also used a tutorial on how to add doll hair. Um, I got it from YouTube, and that will also be in the description box.
If you're going to use the pattern, I do suggest felt because felt's so inexpensive. You're going to cut two of the body shape and you're going to cut four arms out and you're going to cut four legs out. Once you have all the pieces cut out, I suggest starting with the legs and the arms. Um, put them together, both sides, two each, and then stitch them on the very edges of the arms and legs until you get um, to the very top. So you're going to start at the very top of the leg or the arm, and then you're just going to stitch all the way around and make sure you leave the top open for stuffing. Please forgive me if the red lines are a little bit crooked. I'm not the most coordinated person in the world, but what you're going to do, use the red line um, to indicate, you know, where you're going to actually add the stitching by hand. Okay. So you're going to leave the top open and that's left open to stuff. Now the line that's in blue is going to let you know to where you're going to fill put all the stuffing up to okay because you're going to need a little bit of flexibility at the top of those limbs so that you can insert it into the body easily just to let you know when you're adding stuffing to the arms and the legs it can get a little difficult to make sure it goes all the way down to the little foot and all the way down to the little hand so you might want to use something small like and and thin like a I used a paintbrush, the end of a, the back of the paintbrush, to just kind of help push the stuffing down inside the, the limb. This pattern is pretty basic. So what you're going to do at the very tip of the shoulders, you're going to insert the arms and you're going to use a pin to put it in place on each side. And you're going to do the same with the legs. Now you're going to, you're going to use, I don't know, how can I say this? What I did with my doll is I put it at the very end of the body. So what I did was, um, I flattened out the top portion of the leg and then I squeezed it in between the two sides of the body. And then I put a pin in the middle. And that way, when you stitch around the body part of the doll, um, you're going to go ahead and include the limbs into the stitching. You're going to um, start at the neck portion of the doll and you're going to stitch all the way around. That way you make sure you got the limbs attached all the way where the red line is, is where you're going to stitch. You're going to leave the head open so that you can make sure you get add the stuffing for the body. You're going to need polyester fiber filling to fill the body portion of the doll um, and also um, a, a little bit of the head as well. I think you can pretty much figure out how to finish and complete the doll after you've put in the fiber filling. Um, also, what you might want to add, um, what they call personal concerns. Personal concerns are things that, re that were actually that actually belonged to the departed one. It could be something like um, fingernail clippings. It could be hair pieces of the deceased loved one. It could be graveyard dirt, dirt from their grave. It could also be there are some of their cremation ashes. Now you do want to be very careful when you do use these sort of things because you know maybe like if you sprilled a little bit of the cremation ash um, on the felt, it might stain the the doll. So you might want to use a funnel. Be very, very careful. And I wouldn't use more than like maybe like a teaspoon of any of those like ashes or graveyard dirt. You will insert it into the doll. In my case, I don't have any personal concerns for my ancestors. I don't have any clothing of theirs. I don't have any locks of their hair. I don't have anything at all. So what you could do is you could use a name paper. A name paper is, of course, a piece of paper with their name written on it. And you can write the name in and insert it into the head of the doll before you sew it up. Now, once the doll is completely sewn up, this is a good time to add the hair. I did leave a, um, a link in the description box for the video on how to insert hair. I think it's only like a two minute long video. It's pretty easy. There's different ways to do it. Now, in the video, it shows her kind of doing something that resembles latch hook. 
Um, you don't have to use yarn if you know how to add hair to a doll in another way. I've seen some people use like um, hair nets and then add like artificial hair, um, not necessarily yarn. Some people actually use human hair. If you have human hair um, of the deceased, you could use that for the actual hair. Or um, you could go to like a beauty supply shop where you could get like hair extensions or whatever. They also have hair um, like, you know. Um, synthetic hair at the arts and crafts store. Go ahead and use your your best judgment. At the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. You can use paint. You can use buttons. They do have already made eyes like at Michael's. Um, you know, you go ahead and use your best judgment. In my case, I used paint. And if you do use paint, give it, you know, enough time to dry before you pick the doll up and, you know, start dressing dressing him or her because you want to make sure you don't smear any paint or anything like that. When it comes to the attire of the doll, I think the easiest way is to use the doll as a pattern. Um, you can go ahead and lay her on a piece of paper and trace around her body, leaving enough um, just a little bit. If you're make, using the, if you're using felt to make the outfit, you can just trace it a little bit bigger than the doll, not too much, because that way it can just easily be sewn on top of the doll. Or if you're using regular fabric, make trace the doll and leave about five eighths of an inch around um, extra space around the edge of the doll. If you're familiar with sewing, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you know how to make clothes yourself you know, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. If you are going to take the easy route, which is using felt, like I said, the easiest thing is just to trace the doll. I mean, trace the doll on a piece of paper and make it just a little bit bigger to fit the doll of the body. So that way you're getting the, the sleeves and, and pants for the doll or dress. It's very basic. I think you'll understand how to do it. And like I said, you know, I want it to... Um, Looking back, it would have been nice had I made this video while I was making the doll, but unfortunately, I wasn't thinking about that at the time. And then I, after the dolls were done, I was really happy with the result. And I kept thinking, you know, I want to inspire them to make their own for their own ancestors. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that I couldn't show you step by step, but I think you guys can figure it out. Now, once the doll is fully clothed, you can add adornments. That's my favorite part. Now, if they loved hunting or fishing, you can give them a little miniature gun or fishing rod. Um, if they're prissy girls, give them jewelry and other things that they enjoyed, they enjoyed on the earth. In my case, you know, I made for the empress, I gave her earrings. I gave her a necklace. I also gave a necklace to the emperor as well. If they had jewelry that they still have laying around that you have of your ancestors or your loved one, Go ahead and use that. That would be great. Once the doll is completed, pray to your deity of a choice for protection. Ask that no other spirit other than your loved one inhabit the vessel. Also, it's important to realize that there's a possibility that your loved one may already be in an actual body since they may have reincarnated into a new person. In this case, ask your deity that the spirit doll will serve as a psychic link to the newly reincarnated individual. Once you said your prayer, it's time to actually breathe life into the doll. I always use incense. Um, you could light candles if you want to, but I pretty I try to keep it as simple as I possibly can. So just a stick of incense and a little light communication with the doll is is all that's really needed. I did purchase some new incense, and I use this to. Um, to what I would call enchant the doll. This particular instance is called Spiritual Guide. And I just recently purchased this. It was like a little sampler pack that I got from a company called artchats.com. Art uh, the link will be in the description box. When you um, breathe life into a doll or enchant a doll or want to ask the doll to be inhabited, you want to make sure that you use an incense that's appropriate, um, something that's used for spiritual communication. In this case, when I saw that this was in the pack, I was like, okay, I'm going to use that. And that's what I use. Now, mind you, I already breathed life into her yesterday, but today I am just doing this demonstration. So it's going to be pretty easy. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to light the incense. Where did it go? I'm looking for my 
um, a butane lighter. Don't know where it is right now. Here we go. Right here. Okay. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and light the incense like so. And get it going. And I usually put, you know, put the doll in the middle of the altar and you're just going to, you know, address him or her by name. In this case, I'm saying, Queen Taranesh, you are welcome to inhabit this vessel that I made in your likeness. Communicate with me through messages in the mind and through dreams. I breathe life into you. And you might want to just go ahead and, you know, move her or him through the incense just kind of get some of that going and then now you can breathe life into the doll and basically what you're doing is you want to make eye contact with your spirit doll and you want to breathe right directly into wherever her nostrils or his nostrils are wherever you sewed them attach them or whatever so in this case you just lightly breathe while making eye contact with the doll okay once that's completed your doll is now activated. You'll need a place to display your dolls. Remember to honor them with things that they enjoyed while they were living. You can get miniature bottles of rum. You can also use food. Now, in my case, I don't know much about my ancestors. So you could use things like oranges, um, apples. When the fruit starts to get, you know, withered that's when it's time to replace it you can also you know put flowers in front of them light candles in front of them however you want to honor them communication with spirit or ancestral dolls is very subtle okay you may notice slight activity in your doll their eyes may seem to light up and there may be times when their smile seems to be a little bit more pronounced than usual um, positive vibrations are another feeling that they may give off this is one of the reasons why i like cloth or felt dolls because if you have a positive feeling from the doll you may want to hug it when you need to Here's a brief list of everything that you're going to need to make your doll. Um, I did want to mention that when I used the pattern, I don't have a printer. So um, what I did was I traced the, the pattern um, directly from my screen. Um, you can make the doll as big or small as you want. You're going to need your, the fabric of your choice. I suggest felt because it is easy. Okay. Or if you want to use a, a fabric that you get at um, the fabric store, that's fine too. Just make sure that the color, this matches the skin color of your loved one. Also, you're going to need thread for the skin color and uh, fabric. And then you're also going to need needles. You're going to need polyester fiber filling. You could add personal concerns. That would be items that belong to your loved ones. That could be the graveyard dirt. It could be cremation ashes. You can use um, locks of their hair. You can use locks for the hair to stuff the doll. And you can also use um, locks of hair to use as actual hair for the doll if that's what you'd like to do. Remember, you can use a name paper. That would be a paper with their name written out on it to insert into the doll. Um, you could add that if you do have additional things to put in it, but if you don't have anything like any personal concerns that belong to your loved one, you can just go ahead and use the name paper. Also, you're going to need yarn or synthetic hair. Like I said, you could use real hair. Um, you're going to have to add eyes. You could buy eyes at uh, Michael's or you can use paint. So you might need to get some paint. Um, in this case, you'll probably need white paint, whatever eye color they have, um, whether that be blue, brown, or whatever. You'll need some black paint for the pupil. You can also use buttons, you know, um, for the nose. You could just sew it on. I sewed my nose on for the doll just using thread. Um, and then I painted a mouth on. For the clothing, you could purchase extra fabric or even better, like I said, you can make the garment out of something that your loved one once actually wore um, or use bed sheets that belong to them. And then of course, you're gonna add adornments. You could buy 
adornments, making jewelry. If you don't have any jewelry that belong to your loved one, um, if you have like their wedding ring, obviously you can't <laughs> fit the wedding ring on the doll, um, but you could use it maybe as like a bracelet. It might be able to fit uh, around the wrist of the doll. You can use it as a bracelet. If they had necklaces, you could use the necklaces that belong to your loved one um, and adorn, adorn your doll with that. Also, you all you are going to need some space in your house for the actual doll to sit there and be on display. You can use you could set up an ancestral altar that would just be like a table with a nice cloth. It could be a white cloth. It could be a cloth of their favorite color. Um, anything that you use to represent ancestors, you're going to want to do things that they like. So like if you have an aunt, for example, who loves the color purple, then you are going to put your ancestral doll on a on the altar with a purple tablecloth and all the little things that she enjoyed, like, you know, whether that be jewelry, it might be bottles of perfume, whatever it is that your ancestor enjoyed. When you're displaying them, you want to make sure they're surrounded with all the luxuries that they had on the earth. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to support me on Patreon. Thank you for watching.